Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another Mortal Kombat video. Today, with us drawing closer and closer to the eventual reveal of Mortal Kombat 12, I thought that for funsies, we could talk about the possible ways Mortal Kombat may actually be rebooting their characters. More specifically, Scorpion. However, I do wish to point out, this is all theoretical at best. Strictly based off, the Liu Kang aftermath ending, set in the Great Kung Lao era. Now please do keep in mind that currently, as of making this video, we do not currently know if either the Liu Kang ending or Shang Tsung ending is officially canon. But with the interesting premise, the Great Kung Lao ending does actually present to the series, and probably the most safe choice, it raises the question of if they were to set their next game in this particular time time period, how exactly would they reintroduce characters? Because Earthrealmers aren't exactly immortal, bound to time. For us now, we may have to lean back on the older generation of heroes. But due to the ambiguity of what ending is truly canon, it also raises the question of what rules apply here with how characters are introduced. Are they entirely built up from the ground once more, or are they simply plucked from another time period and simply dropped in the present by Fire God Liu Kang? We simply don't know right now, but under the assumption that they are doing a full-scale reboot, and purposely sticking to this new time period. Let's talk about how they could reintroduce a character like Scorpion to the series in this very new and very different timeline. But to cement my ideas for this new Scorpion, I will be pulling ideas and concepts set in Mortal Kombat's lore. So it is something that fits into the previous established canon and lore. Something that's similar, but different enough to be its own thing. Which definitely seems to be quite the trend with requels in the last few years. But before we do begin, as always everyone, before this video starts, if you like what we do here and wish to stay up to date with all things Mortal Kombat 12 related, from lore to news to gameplay, please don't forget to subscribe as well as tick that bell, as it's the best way to stay in the loop with everything going on here. And if you like the video and the idea of this possible reboot series, where I take a character from the Mortal Kombat universe, break them down, and try to figure out how could they fit into the Great Kung Lao timeline, please do give this video a thumbs up and comments down below with a suggestion of who you would like to see me talk about next. But anywho, let's get on to the video, shall we? Now, with this idea being set in the Great Kung Lao era, how exactly does this confirm Scorpion to be present in this timeline? Well, if I'm being honest, it actually doesn't. You see, what allows Scorpion to be present in this timeline is for a reason that is entirely different outside of law, and that is due to his sheer popularity. Let's face it, Scorpion is arguably the face of the series. He is the poster boy and is the mascot of Neverrealm Studios. So even for that reason alone, he kind of wiggles his way into the roster. Whilst this wasn't always the case, as he wasn't present in Mortal Kombat 3, at least until the Ultimate version came out. Ever since his return, he has become an iconic face due to both his design, his marketing, and of course, that fantastic catchphrase. Get over here! But there is actually a pretty interesting way of making him work here. Because while Scorpion is very popular, Hanzo Hasashi, his human form, definitely pales in comparison, despite them being branded as the same entity. But we quickly learn that this wasn't entirely the case during the Neverrealm saga, as we more or less see him go on a full redemption arc from the end of Mortal Kombat 9 onwards. Neverrealm has always kind of flip-flopped between the Scorpion persona and Hanzo Hisashi as a character. So by Mortal Kombat 11, they more or less made it incredibly clear that they were far more comfortable with Hanzo dying as a character than undo the character growth he had undergone. Because of this, I think the mantle of Scorpion was always far more important than the host 
that wielded it. So you could think of Scorpion as a kind of Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance title. Plus, not to beat a literal dead horse here, but how many more times can we do the whole, oh, Hanzo Hisashi's family is dead. They were murdered by the Lin Kuei, and he's really mad about it. Because it's been done in like seven to eight different ways at this point. I feel like everything they could do with Hanzo has essentially been done at this point. He's been a fallen father. He's made a deal with a devil. He's come back from the dead as a literal spirit of vengeance. He's regained his humanity and become a father figure. What else is there to really do with his character? So from what you can probably tell, I'm suggesting that we pass on this title to another member of the Shirai Ryu. And I think the perfect character for this would be Takeda. No, not that one. You see, to fit into the time period of where this all begins and takes place, I'm talking about the founder of the Shirai Ryu, this Takeda, a character that is yet to ever physically make an appearance in the Mortal Kombat series. Because of everyone's unfamiliarity with Takeda, it makes him the perfect candidate to kind of fit into the framework of who Scorpion is as he comes from the Shirai Ryu, was the one that founded it, and did perish at the hands of the Lin Kuei. Although it's worth pointing out that the Lin Kuei failed many, many attempts to assassinate their former student. Yes, you heard that right. Takeda's teachings within the clan did originate from the Lin Kuei style of combat, hence the long and deep-seated rivalry between the two clans as he was branded as a traitor. So we get to explore the personal blood feud during its prime. Now due to the ambiguity of this character, and even the time period this all takes place in, with the freedom of it being a reboot, you basically have a free canvas to have him be a very different Scorpion from what we saw of Hanzo Hisashi. Maybe one that's more wise in his ways, than one that embodies rage. Or you could go to the complete other side of the spectrum and just turn him into an absolutely ruthless, bloody monster. There's lots of options to play with here. Now, of course, this possibility all very much so depends on one character here, pivotal to Hunzo's story, Quan Chi. So, is it possible that the Necromancer could exist in this time period? Well, I'm very pleased to say that it is very, very possible. Despite Quan Chi's humanoid form being from the Neverrealm, technically makes him a demon, one that is not greatly affected by time. And outside of just a lore standpoint, him being absent during the entirety of Eleven actually makes his return that much more possible. But if there is a Scorpion, then there definitely needs to be a Sub-Zero. The rivalry between the two mantles is legendary. But much like the question I posed with Quan Chi, is that possible? As we've all become very familiar with Bi Han, Kui Liang, and Frost. But did you know there is actually another? In an artistic mural, all the way back from the Sky Temple in Mortal Kombat X, we can see artwork depicting a Cryomancer Grandmaster. This individual is currently yet to be named, but it does go to show just how intertwined the Cryomancer legacy is to that of the Lin Kuei. What his origins could be? That's hard to say. I won't go too in depth here, as I feel like this Cryomancer could be explored in his own video. But I do think that this is an interesting way of rebooting the Scorpion and Sub-Zero feud. I know quite a few of you probably aren't on board with the idea of another individual becoming Scorpion. And honestly, I get it. It's very understandable. But you've also got to think, we've seen Hanzo suffer so, so much over the last decade, with really an extremely strong emphasis of it during the Neverrealm saga. The thing is, Hanzo has always been a bleeding heart something that was prevalent even throughout the Midway Saga of games. But I do think there's only so many ways you can rehash this idea with this character that many times. It does feel like his death in Eleven was the perfect way to end his story. Having done everything he needed to do in order to redeem himself and get the peace, 
he so, so desperately deserves. He has gone through a lot, and Hanzo is iconic to the series. But beneath the surface level, I don't think people see Hanzo Hasashi, they see Scorpion. So narratively and creatively, I think this is a very good way to pass off the torch to another character. One that fits an extremely similar framework whilst being open enough to be explored in a different manner. I find it to be quite interesting. And I mean hell, you could have it be a large mystery throughout the game's main narrative. Maybe you don't learn of Scorpion's identity till the very end of the game. But of course, this is all just an idea I concocted and wanted to present to all of you. So with that said and done, what do you all think about this idea to reboot the Scorpion character? Would you like to explore the ancestry of the Shirai Ryu? Or do you think we should play it safe and stick with Hanzo Hisashi. Please do comments down below, as I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would actually like to turn this into a bit of a series, building up to Torva's release. So if you have any recommendations, please put them down below. And as always everyone, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting, as we eagerly await Mortal Kombat 12's reveal. Take care everyone, I'll see you all soon.